Let me show you how easy it is to use REST with Interweb 17. First, we need to add a data source. For the URL, I'm inserting an online REST data source. Now let's create a simple page. The designer is still in development, so you may notice a few glitches along the way. The buttons will move the client data cursor forward and backward using the client events. The buttons are enabled and disabled automatically by binding the enabled property to the properties of the client side cursor. For table 1, I will set the data source to the data source we created earlier and customize a few properties. For text 1, I am binding the text property directly. For text 2, I am using Markdown with an embedded binding to bind the data. For text 3, I am using Markdown again but binding the properties of the cursor to display the current and maximum record count. And here we have one of the beta designer glitches. The designer normally refreshes as properties are changed, but sometimes it loses the connection. To bypass this, let me close and reopen the designer. With the designer reopened, you can now see the property changes are applied. Even the data is live at design time. Now let's run the demo. Notice we have not written any code at all. Notice that the back button is disabled. This was done automatically by our binding in the enabled property of the button. We can navigate the data and all the bound properties are updated as we move through the client side data. Now that I've shown how easy it is to connect to an existing REST server, let me show you how to do the same with a T dataset. For simplicity, I will use a T client dataset, but any T dataset is usable. Instead of dragging and dropping non visual components, we use the Add Component option. For the data, I will load the data from a simple XML file and use the in-memory function of the T dataset. The data in the XML file is different from the external REST URL, but has the same schema, so we don't need to update any of the bindings. Now I need to change the IntraWeb data source to use our T dataset instead of the external REST URL. Let's run it to see the changes. Data binding isn't limited to read only, and two way bindings are fully supported. To see this, let me change the text one from a text control to an edit control. This is most easily done by simply editing the IWML. When I open the designer again, you see that text1 
is now an edit control. In order for any changes to be posted back to our server-side T dataset, we will need some sort of server event. I will convert the next button into a server-side event that updates text2 to say OK. This allows IntraWeb to post the changed data back into the VCLT dataset. In this event, I modify the text property, which will be reflected in the browser. I'm changing Mickey to Mini. When I click the Next button, it triggers a call to the server and will update the appropriate row in the T dataset. Changes are not limited to a single row, and changes to any fields in any rows of the data will be batched and updated to the server when a server event is called. All this was done transparently by IntraWeb, and I did not have to write a single line of server code to accomplish any of it.